Just cutting in here to let you know about some fabulous stuff coming up. Get yourselves ready for all the horror. Y'all know we go all out in October. And we love horror like a lot. So we're joining a bunch of podcasters, authors, and fancy entertainment personalities discussing all things horror. It's the whole month of October with new content every single day. And you can follow it all on Twitter using hashtag AllTheHorror. Our All The Horror episode will air on October 10th. Mark those calendars. And we're talking about some memorable trans characters in horror history with Lex Dracos from The Geekly. And then on the 21st, check out Amelia on a special Fellowship of the Geeks, all about the classic film Horror Express. Check it, check it, check it, check it. Woo, woo! What? Join us and our fabulous friends this October for All the Horror! <laughs> on Satan story. You know, I was starting to think that people just weren't into blaming Satan for things anymore. See, you know, and that's a dirty shame. <laughs> I know, like it used to be constant. I mean, when we when we decided we were going to start doing Hating on Satan like a couple years ago, I had so much Satan to plow through. I had to decide which Satan stories yeah. I'd go with. <laughs> And, like, now my news alert for, you know, Satan just isn't getting hits, and I've I've been so sad. And then the other day, the two skeptical chaps had this story that they talked about on their show, uh-huh. and I was just, like, screaming. So, and I don't even know how it didn't come up on my own thing, because when I searched for it directly, I found it very easily. But I, I have this theory that because the story uses the word satanic and not Satan. Oh. And maybe, maybe that's it. Like, oh, maybe I need yes. to search for more things. And didn't you, didn't you tell me that the woo-woo Illuminati people and the, and the QAnons, didn't you tell me that they're very into the word Luciferian? Yes. I may have to expand. Into yes, that. yes, because I would. I think you'll probably find a lot of stuff. Because, like I said, my friend that's gone down the rabbit hole has sent me articles that talk about Luciferian initiations oh, and hacks to Lucifer. And yes, yes. And you know, I mean, it is. It is a little sad that we we may never have a line again that's as good as going to a Methodist church. Well, you might as well shout, Hail Satan! You know, I told my mother about that once, and she got, she just laughed and laughed. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I mean, you know, that line is so epic and so great that we, we even made a magnet out of it, because who wouldn't want that on their fridge? I love it, yes. So are you ready? I am awesomeness? ready, Yes. On Satan. Okay. Elmbrook, Wisconsin, school district school board members debated whether students should return to the classroom this fall, and if they do, whether or not they need to wear masks. Seems perfectly ordinary. Mm-hmm. Reactions to the decision to require students to wear masks were mixed. One parent... Heidi Anderson, putting her objection in religious terms. Six (laughs) foot distance and wearing masks are pagan rituals of satanic worshipers. Our children do not practice satanic worship. We don't have them stand six feet apart from each other with facial coverings. (laughs) 
oh my god it's hard to believe that it's real but i know it is it's oh it's so good (laughs) when the school board president told her that defamatory comments should be avoided she said some shit to a school board member who Mm -hmm. was muslim and so she's like this is not defamatory I'm stating facts. You're a leader of the Islamic community, are you not? My kids are Christians. They are not subject to face coverings. Christian children should not be forced to wear face coverings any more than children who are Islamic or Muslim should be forced to, as you've put it, be subject to the American style of sexualization of children that have to wear less clothing than you're comfortable with your children wearing. Oh my god. (laughs) Uh. Now, now, she really does say more than that, but that's where it's going to get good here, because Uh. the school board happens to broadcast their meetings... On YouTube. Oh. And those comments to Mushir Hassan were captured live, but the school ended up editing those out of Uh their archives. And the school issued a statement that they should have removed her from the meeting. Mm Mm-hmm. And, you know, I was sad to hear that they'd edited that part out. Whatever really offensive shit she said to him, and not necessarily this bit. But... It, I did realize that it means that I would be able to find the meeting on YouTube, and you better believe that I did. Oh, my God. Uh, so would you like to hear her? Absolutely. <laughs> okay, so before I listen, I have to ask you, is there a picture of this woman in an article? Uh, there is, but see, and part of why I don't have the YouTube video for you, although you can look it up, yeah. is because the camera was so far away. She's like a dot. Oh. But there, in one of the news articles, there is a picture, and she is exactly as you imagine her. Oh my god! Because in my mind, it's probably nothing like she really looks like. But in my mind, I'm picturing the Fat Fighters teacher. From that regular skit from... Uh, from Little Britain. From Little Britain. <laughs> what was her name? Marjorie something? Marjorie. <laughs> um, a little, like, <laughs> longer hair, but uh-huh. not, un- not unlike. She's not <laughs> I'm unlike Marjorie, Marjorie from it? Fat Fighters. <laughs> oh, my God. Anyway, on that note, I am now playing the MP3. Six foot distance and masks are a pagan ritual of satanic worshipers. Absorb that in. Six feet, where did six feet come from, people? Why is it not three? Why is it not five? Why is it not ten? Why is it not thirty? Why is it six? Oh, you cut, please. Six feet has nothing to do with Satan. I'm almost done. Thank you. We've been very patient listening to all of you. I'm almost done. Thank you. (laughs) She's such a bit. I'll finish quickly. Thank you. What the fuck is we, I'm our sorry. Husbands, <laughs> our children do not practice satanic worship. We don't have them stand six feet apart from each other with facial coverings. <laughs> and she's so earnest. Data oh, she's very serious. Suggested here, but no logic. These masks are not proven to stop the virus or any other, and given the hygiene habits of children and teens, it can cause them physical harm including staff, shingles, Mercer, and all sorts of other things that are already beginning to happen as these children have gone back to athletics. Oh, you dumb cunt. No one has I, ever gotten like staff or Mercer from a face you mask. Take people out. So I'll take somebody else's time and finish. I've got about three, 30 seconds left. Jane, 30 seconds left. 30 seconds left, Jane. You are relying <laughs> on the advice of doctors who are under the control of large medical organizations which benefit financially from the continuation of this emergency, as well as the edict of government officials with significant monetary vested investment in this pandemic. Ascension Ventures operate 462 acute care hospitals and numerous other healthcare related facilities in 41 states and the District of Columbia combined. These limited partners generate 96 billion in annual revenue and employ 572,000 associates on their website. 
She sounds like she's either going to punch the podium or break down in tears. I can't tell which. (laughs) My family has for generations fought for freedom all the way back to the Civil War. She's... She's I have only trying relatives to help. who have fought and died and paid the because ultimate we price don't realize to how ensure that their dying. children and grandchildren and generations to come could live in a free, representative republic that guaranteed life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. These draconian measures for a disease that has very low morbidity, which is much less likely to happen to our kids than them getting in a car accident and dying, or their grandparents oh, falling in a home, is draconian socialist tactics and overreach, you are employed by the people of Brookfield and Elm Grove. How is it socialist to wear a cost. face mask during a pandemic? The Elmbrook School Administration <laughs> no, works at our like, pleasure. That's just so utterly oh. random. You do not work for oh. Madison or any other unelected entity. Our government oh. is of the people, by the people, and for the people. For the people. But does she realize that 90% of all people think she's this stupid? One Country, I don't think she does. One nation under God, and we look to God for these answers when we can't figure it out. And I would suggest that you all do that. There's a wonderful prayer that he taught us to pray. It's called the Lord's Prayer, oh. and you can find it in your Bible. Thank you for your time. Oh, my God, what a dumb cunt. That's all <laughs> I have to say. <laughs> Oh my god. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so oh. oh my god. Do you are you fascinated? I are am you... fascinated. I don't even know. Oh my god, these people. I I thought... It's like how is like wearing a mask when what does it have to do with satanic rituals? Yeah, totally. I mean like what satanic ritual is she even talking about? I mean, what, I can't even imagine what she's imagining. But in her did she head. see a movie once where like Satan worshippers had masks on? Maybe but they wouldn't. Which in real life they don't. But they're they wouldn't be a mask like that. They oh, wouldn't I know. be a medical mask. I mean, does she think that doctors? are performing pagan rituals of Satan worshippers. Oh, I know. And I love, you know, six feet away, where do you think they got six? It wasn't five or three, it's six. I know! That was my favorite. (laughs) That's my favorite. Because she is the first person that I have heard that has taken the six feet and turned that into Satan. Oh, what a dumb bitch. Because, you know, every... I'm actually a little surprised that other people aren't going there. That it took her to come up with that. That's fantastic. Well, she and she probably, I don't know. I wonder if she's an anti-vaxxer. I, I'm, I'm willing to bet that if we looked into Heidi Anderson, I, I'm willing to bet that she's caused trouble before. Oh, I'm sure. I bet she goes to the school board meetings. And a didn't lot. you get the impression the way that she she kept saying like, "I have thirty more seconds, thirty more seconds." Yes. Oh you God. could tell that people were like getting irate and wanting to throw her out or something. Oh my God! That's you the know. only problem with that video is that it's from such a distance and you're kind of seeing the whole room. It's like imagine a tiny camera up in the corner of a room like at the ceiling. Uh, and so everything is far away. Like everything is tiny little people. That's the only problem. But I will link to the video in our show notes so that everyone can watch it because you will fucking love. Oh my God. And I want her just regaled with mocking mail. Oh my God. And, and anyone, if you have anything, any comments, about Heidi Anderson and how stupid she is. Let us know. Hit us up on social media. Send us an email. We would love to hear you mocking her. Oh my god. I uh, yeah, I love that. That was fabulous. She's amazing. <laughs> Breathe deeply. Deeply. The year of woo. I want to take you on a journey that I've been down before. A journey that can be really long and kill your whole day if you're not careful. So we're just going to travel 
just a little ways into this particular internet wormhole. Not all the way in, just the tip. Because today, we're going to talk about star seeds. And I promise you, the amount of eye rolling you're going to do while listening to me now is nothing compared to later on when you decide to Google it. You've been warned. So, star seeds. The basic belief is that a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away, some aliens were like, hey, let's just for funsies send teams of ourselves to other planets and help them evolve and advance with our benevolence and psychic magic powers and stuff. Just because we've got it so good here on Schmegatron that we've run out of ways to advance ourselves. So, zip pow, some Schmegatronians come to Earth to help us because we're so pathetic. The anthropologist in me wants you to know that if you think humans must have had alien help to build pyramids or Stonehenge or whatever, you need to listen up. Just because you're too dumb and lazy to figure out the movements of the stars and the changing of the seasons doesn't mean a guy a thousand years ago who had to be totally in tune with the natural world to fucking survive on this planet wouldn't whoop your ass on the SAT without even one prep course, Chachi. And then those Schmegatronians, you know, blended in with humans and mated with us and stuff. And that's where theories about them kind of split. Because some think starseeds are the reason why humans don't have the same blood type and eye color and stuff. And others think a starseed's mom fucked an alien and their pretend dad was totally cool with it. Or maybe they fell from the sky as a fully formed adult. Or they were a spirit who swooped down and took over someone's body. But the important thing is they're here right now and they want to help. And you might even be one. This is the part I think I like the most. Amelia, how do I know if I'm a starseed? Well, do you think you might be? Like, when you think really hard, do you feel like maybe you are? And, more importantly, do you feel like calling yourself one? Well, that's good enough, because feelings are real! Seriously, though. There are lists of characteristics that will help you figure out if you're really not of this earth. Like, are you lonely? Are you the black sheep of your family? Do you have a weird relationship with your opposite sex parent? Do you not like it when the weather is really hot? Congratulations! You are totally a starseed! So, now what? What are you here to do? Well, I'm going to read a little something by a guy named Sam Boomer, who is a beyond quantum healing practitioner and doesn't look anything like a barista who gets your order wrong because he's always daydreaming. Being a starseed isn't about glamour or basking in glory. It's about making the contribution you're here to make as a fully sovereign being working in equal co-creation with the Earth's sentience and the fellow consciousness explorers who've gotten stuck. You may know that you've come here with a mission, but don't allow your ego to cloud your judgment. Knowing you're on the path is only half the battle. You need to fulfill your potential. As a starseed, you've come here as the best of the best. There are trillions of other souls that were waiting to get in on the game and incarnate on Earth. But you came ahead of them because of your talents. Don't allow yourself to be taken in by material distractions and false synchronicities. You have a special role to play in the Earth's ascension to 5D. Don't fail your mission. No pressure there, Rainbow Bright. Oh my god, I have I have a news story to tell you about. And I'm just going to read you the uh, headline. Okay. And allow you to react. 
Okay. And then I will go into the story. Now, I haven't done a lot of research on this, but I am fucking fascinated. (laughs) Virginia woman found with maggots in urine, daughter and granddaughter charged. Okay. So it is like, is she like pissing maggots? That's kind of what I... Is that even possible? Apparently... So, uh, a woman and her daughter in Pennsylvania County, Virginia, have been charged with abuse and neglect of their mother and grandmother. According to the criminal complaint, Pennsylvania County Department of Social Services, Adult Protective Services, reported a senior adult abuse and neglect case, blah, 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 after they were alerted to it by the hospital in Danville. They reported that 74-year-old Eileen Myers lived with her daughter, Shannon Tipton, her adult granddaughter, Brianna Tipton. Uh, Tipton. I mean, and also Brianna. Tipton. Is is there a Brianna that isn't trash? I know. (laughs) Documents show that Myers was released from the hospital on March 18th, 2020, Mm -hmm. after having a Foley catheter placed. Okay. And a Foley catheter is a tube inserted into the bladder to drain urine. Mm-hmm. The hospital reported that Myers was taken to the emergency room on April 2nd with maggots in her urine and vaginal area. Oh my God. And had the beginning stages of minor bed sores. You know, and I've had patients that I've had to deal with the Foley catheter. Right. I knew you would know a little something about this. But the one that I had to deal with, she actually had it inserted in through the belly button. Oh, wow. And the JJ was completely turned off. Like sealed shut? Yeah. Okay. So you I know the JJ no. doesn't have anything to do with urine, right? I mean, whatever, <laughs> whatever ex... No, 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 the vagina was not sealed shut, but the exit for that was not The urethra was closed. Was closed, Yeah. Wow, she must have had a lot of infections. Of but I guess, but I know, like, most catheters are, you know... Go up through the urethra. Yeah. The one I had when I had my hysterectomy did. But maggots, that is really... That is, like, I can't even wrap my mind around that. That is was a like, level... That's a level of filth that I... Yeah. I, just frightening. Yeah. So, the, the, you know, the hospital, they cleaned her out. Her foley was flushed. Oh, my God. That poor woman. And she, they released her right back into the care of Shannon and Brianna. And apparently they would lock her bedroom door from the outside at night to prevent her from wandering. Ugh. They'd put her to bed and lock her door from the outside at approximately 9 p.m. and not check on her again until the next day about 12 hours later. Oh my gosh, she was probably laying in shit. Oh, totally. Oh my god. And the whole point of the catheter is that... The urine just comes out and collects in a bag or whatever. Yeah, but you have to empty it. Yeah. And I guarantee you that needs to be emptied more than 12 in 12 12 hours. Yeah. And also, it needs to be changed at least once a month. Oh, yeah. I mean, ew. I can't... mm. It needs to be changed. It's probably not been changed for... Oh, my God. And also, like, okay, so here's... Because maggots means flies... Mm-hmm. What I'm wondering is, was she just bare ass from the waist down all the time, laying in her bed with, like, shit and piss all over the place, and Ugh. so flies were basically all over her? That's what I'm wondering. Oh, my God, how awful. And it's just, it's just astonishing. And, I, and weirdly, while I, when I first found that, um, and I went, you know, when I went to look for it again later, cause I stumbled upon it one day and when I went to look for it later, there was another article from 2016 from the UK with this headline, woman who peed worms for three months is found to have infestation of fly larvae in her bladder. Oh my god! Oh, and ap- apparently it was an American woman, but they're just they're just reporting it over there because I'm only just now opening <gasps> that up. So maybe it really was. I can't. Oh my god! The fifty year old fifty, that's younger than us. Ugh. Came to the hospital complaining that for the past three months, three months, she had been 
passing worms when she went to the toilet and finding urinating extremely painful and suffering from pain in her side. Oh my god. And I'm sorry, that would happen to me once and I would run screaming to the emergency room. So fucking... But, oh my god, there's something about this that is going to be your favorite thing. <laughs> so they made her do a urine sample. Uh, the urine sample had a whole bunch of these teeny little half centimeter long larvae that were clear to the naked eye. Uh-huh. There's some pictures of them here. Further testing revealed the larvae were not technically worms, but belonged to the diphtheria species of fly, <laughs> known to cause a condition called myasis. <laughs> diphtheria, Pitney. Oh my god. <laughs> and apparently urinary myasis happens when people drink water sources that are contaminated with the eggs. But the thing is, that woman that was this year, <laughs> there's no indication that that's what we're talking about here. And what's really cute, you know how Google will do the people also ask? Uh-huh. The first thing on this list of things that people also ask, how do you get maggots in your urine? <laughs> I mean, come on. So it's I mean, a thing. And, it's a thing. And what I want to know. Oh, my God. Are the people who ask that question, do they want to get maggots in their urine and they're trying to figure out how to do that? <laughs> because that's a weird question. You know, there's some weird shit. <laughs> there is some weird shit. Yeah, I don't know. Can you imagine that someone... I Because I, you know, and we've always talked about this, no matter what it is, someone wants to fuck it or jerk off to it. Oh, and yeah. And you know there's somebody out there that is really turned on by maggots in their pee. Oh, I'm sure. I am absolutely and sure. And it's interesting that it seems to it seems to be women more than men, but I I may have to look into this. I that may have to find so, out if it Oh to my men too. god, that is so crazy. Well. Wow. <laughs> I knew you'd appreciate it on many <laughs> levels. <laughs> Oh my, I didn't see you there. You really spooked me. Just like my podcast, The Paranormal Burrito. We're a weekly podcast featuring a new guest every episode. So join us for fun and spooky stories. If you have a spooky story you'd like to share, email us at theparanormalburrito at gmail.com. The Paranormal Burrito, your true stories. Speaking of urine, you know, I've been, I don't know, I went through, you know, last time's woo segment made me, you know, do a lot of research online involving the word urine. <laughs> Which we really didn't intend that this was going to be urine month on uh, the show. No, no, but it's just kind of funny. P. Timber. <laughs> And I have read, there is countless Reddit boards, constant oh discussion yeah. about people's roommates, their parents, their kids, pissing in bottles, and then keeping the bottles in their closet or in their room. There is countless. Like quarters? I guess. It's a thing. Totally independent of the woo thing. I mean, I, I guess I could understand. Well, it, I mean, it would have to be a guy because only a guy. Well, you know, have we told that story when you had to pee in a bottle on a bus in Guatemala? Oh, oh yeah. In Guatemala on the bus. Yeah, yeah. Bottle. That I can understand. I think we have. But apparently, like, it must be like it's either a symptom of depression. Like, maybe it's depression or they don't like their family or whatever, but apparently it's very widespread for people to piss in bottles and cans and cups and leave them under the bed, in the closet. See, I mean, 
mean, okay, my, my first instinct, of course, is to come up with a, a legitimate reason why anyone would do this. And all I could think of is, you know, like you wake up in the middle of the night and you don't, and you have to have that conversation with yourself because you're comfy in bed. But yeah, but and, then you're not going to save it for months and have 50 right, bottles like if you, of piss under your bed. Like if you just wanted to roll over and you knew there was a Gatorade bottle, an empty Gatorade bottle on the floor... You could just pee into that and not have to get out of bed, and then you just deal with it in the morning. I've done that while I was camping. Oh, I'm sure you would. Because I didn't want to schlep barefoot a hundred feet down right. a hill to go pee. Just to pee, exactly. But that's different because you have bottles when you're camping for that. Really? But I'm talking like in the home. Right. But see, that's the the whole the whole concept of peeing while camping is is a, a discussion you and I have had many times. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Because I am a girl person and not a penis haver, I the just needing to pee every once in a while is a major goddamn ordeal, oh, and yeah, that's why camping yeah. is one of many reasons why camping is unacceptable to me. But it was just so funny that I discovered that while I was researching stuff for that woo, but. And then we'll close with this because it's not a topic that, you know, very, you know, more than this discussion other than it's going to make people giggle. But <laughs> I don't, I don't the, the one thing that cracked me up was like, I just don't know what to do. I was cleaning my 16 year old son's bedroom and I found at least 20 bottles of pee underneath his bed. <laughs> what do I do about it? Do I ignore it? Do I clean it up? Do I talk to him? <laughs> I mean, I think you have to. It's not like finding a jizz-covered sock. I mean, this is the kid is saving pee. Isn't that funny? I mean, at least send his dad in there. For fuck's sake. Anyway, I... You know... <laughs> something and I'm I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure we've told this before but the thing is it's been so long that it's worth telling again uh -huh. um the worst person in the world when I think of P <laughs> oh yes oh I yes think of the time and I won't have to go into the entire story but oh no long story short we were all at a con, Pitney and his ex, and me and the worst person in the world. <laughs> and uh, it was Galaxy Fair, wasn't it? Yes, it was. Yes, because that was the only time I ever got laid at a con. But it was very difficult. So basically this gorgeous little creature was following me around, and I was like, yes, please. And then the worst person in the world thought he had a shot at some probably skeezy whatever because he had the worst possible taste. Um, <laughs> yes, he did. Oh, my God. Toothless, I mean, homeless. He was in love with it. Oh, <laughs> bus stop drifter. That was totally his type. I mean, you know, you're into what you're into. But really, you know, there were, and, and, but some of that was because he couldn't get better than that because he was disgusting. But here's the thing. So he... He and I had been sharing this, the other, you know, queen-size bed in that room. Mm -hmm. And he specifically told me, go ahead and invite the pretty thing up to our room because you can have the bed because I won't be coming back tonight. I remember because I had a phone conversation with him on the hotel phone where he called and said that to me. To make sure that everyone to make knew sure that I that was having you, the sex. Yes, yes. That I was having the sex with the beautiful one. Yes. Who, for some reason, well, I shouldn't say for some reason, I was walking around mostly naked. He thought I was some sort of, you know, dominatrix type, and I was happy to let him think that. <laughs> you definitely looked the type. <laughs> I mean, I was... Well, you were dressed up like the type, you know. Uh, yes. I mean, it was a costume, but yes. still... Weirdly, that does tend to be my milieu when I go to cons. <laughs> as, as slutty and dominatrixy as I can possibly get away with. But anyway, <laughs> so the worst person in the 
world thinks he's gonna go off with this other guy. And at some point, the two of them come into our room and they're in the bathroom. Mm-hmm. And I, right now I'm forgetting the detail of, is that where the shower took place? Or did they have a shower I in the other guy's room? I so. think Because I, I, I feel like it had to have been in our room. I think it was, yeah. Because, um, and keep in mind, I'm already in the room, in bed with someone, and we're having to, like, keep stopping because, God, there was a lot of traffic in the room that night, but yeah. I was not letting him go. So, <laughs> so the worst person in the world is in the bathroom there and a shower is had and ew, whatever. And like, and of, and then of course, you know, we don't really hear much about it. And I swear to God, urine becomes very important here. Yes. So <laughs> after he determines that he is not being invited to that guy's room and that he is staying in our room after all, but I am not letting the pretty boy leave because I haven't gotten my cookie yet. Because we kept getting interrupted, and I'm not letting him leave until I get to have sex to completion, god damn it. So the worst person in the world, huffingly, takes two chairs and puts them together like he's uh, making a baby. Oh my or something. god, that's so stupid. That was all for drama, too, because I'm was sorry. All about drama. He could have laid on the floor. M- lay on the goddamn person. floor. Do you know how often I've slept on the floor of a hotel room at a con? Like, all the time. Yes, because when you cram like a dozen people into a room because you're all poor. <laughs> just, and remember, just I always had my choice of spot was again in the corner on the wall underneath the curtain, remember? Over by the curtain. And usually yep. there was a table over in that corner. Yeah. So you could kind of block. You had like a whole little area. That totally. was always my spot, yes. Totally. And so, you know, he, Mr. Dramatic with his, you know. Oh, those two goddamn and, hotel chairs, yes. With the two uh, hotel chairs uh, and like all curled up in two chairs really uncomfortably and like the next day was basically when we were leaving but then but the next morning after i finally was able to let the pretty boy go then that's where the conversation of him talking about when he and whatever skeezy guy he thought he was going to get laid with were in the shower and he said and i quote He wanted me to pee on him, but I didn't have to go. (laughs) And I'm not going to feel guilty about that. I'm not going to feel guilty about that. I just didn't have to go. It's just like, no one's talking to you. Like, he he would go on and on as if we were reacting to him, and we were never. But it was like, I remember all the way home. Did I tell you he wanted me to pee on him? But I didn't have to go. That was also the, the day that he called me... Mr. Vagina. Yeah, well, because he was jealous because he got some, or you got some cock and he did oh, not. Oh, yeah, I did. Uh, uh, God damn uh, it. Uh, I mean, really, if you're if, if I'm only going to get laid at a con once, I I kind of struck gold with that one. I mean, that was that was about as pretty a guy as has ever been. And didn't we run into him a year or two later? We thought it was him and he pretended to not know us. Yes. And that and, totally you know, was him. It was totally him. And I guess that's fine. Oh, God, yeah. I mean... Oh, God, yeah. Nothing was going to happen there. but Maybe he wanted you to pee on him. But I didn't have to go. <laughs> 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 oh, You're in. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a you. <laughs> Boutique. Yes. Um, I think we need to give them a thing, Spike. We can give them a drop that they could plan out their yes. show. Yes, I think we've uh, got to find some time and get, get time to do, do that. I think we should do it right now. I think we should do it right now. Look, I'll show you how easy it is, Spike. <laughs> Watch this. I'm just going to do it live. Okay, do it live. Like that bloke screams. I'm just going to do it live. Watch this. Hi, this is Dr. Dan from the Two Skeptical... Sh- I can't do it now. <laughs> Look, I can't speak. Too much pressure. Right, I'll try again. I'll try again. I'll try again. Take 52. Hi, this is Dr. Dan from the Two Skeptical Chaps podcast, and you are listening to the most bitchin' boutique. See? 
That was easy, wasn't it? Okay. They could send us one, we could play it in ass. Yeah, you yeah. Right, you do it. Yeah. Right, what you do you want me to say? Whatever, whatever comes to mind. Hi, this is Spike from the Two Skeptical Chaps podcast, who ain't no bitch, but you're listening to The Bitch and Boutique. Oh, that was good. I think I hope they use that. Let's see if they cut it and put it in the next show. <laughs> Diplomatic community. <laughs> tell you yes okay because the plethora well uh, the plethora of horrible horror movies on netflix is astounding anyway right oh god but they keep adding more and because of the time of year you know it's going to be more and more and more oh my god yeah okay you know me i will watch anything and think it's good i know you will find something to enjoy about anything yeah. This piece of shit on Netflix. <laughs> it's so horrible. Wait, in fact, I have to turn it on for a second because I'm not going to remember the name of this movie. It'll just take one second. Okay. Oh, where is that remote? How dare okay. the remote think it has the right to not be exactly where you I ne- it? Okay, wait. I, I'm logging into my Netflix just so I can see the name of this movie because, oh my God. <laughs> okay. I'm here like a total geek with my... Xbox controller. Your Xbox controller. Logging into my Netflix so I can see to go. I can go to my continue watching. Oh, it's okay. It's called Our House. Our House. Okay. Yes. And <laughs> okay. I love anything haunted house, right? Oh, totally. There, that's haunted house movies are the best. I love that, but this movie is so pointless, so plotless. <laughs> so stupid, so doesn't make sense. It literally goes from, like, you know, the parents die and the older brother is, you know, watching over the younger siblings and the uh, the sister seems to be fine and the younger boy is an asshole because, of course, he is because he's a chinless teenager, so he's going to be an asshole, right? Because he's a did teenager. You say, did you say chinless teenager? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And that seems to be a theme. Because the younger teenage boy and the older teenage boy, who's probably about, you know, he's in college, so maybe I want to say he's 19 or 20. Okay. You would think it would be cute, right? But no. Chinless. Oh, my God. Both. Chinless. That's unfortunate. Yes. But anyway, it goes from nothing happening where the boy says, oh, something weird is going on, and then all of a sudden, and this is an hour into the movie where nothing has happened. Oh, God. And then all of a sudden, the kid, the older brother, is, like, talking to some colleague at the college, like, I'm very concerned. There's very weird things going on in my house. Could it be with the experiments that I'm doing? Because he's doing, like, some sort of weird experience to make, like, wireless electricity. Okay. And apparently they must have edited out 90% of the movie because... None of that shit happened in the movie? I think that him doing these experiments somehow made ghosts come. Okay. But the only evidence of ghosts that you see is him all of a sudden talking about the weird things that are going on in his house. That's like the first mention because we haven't seen anything. And that is literally an hour into the movie. Oh, God. It it. is just so... I have tried three times to finish this movie, and it's only 90 minutes. Oh, my God. That's how... Oh, my God. That is how big this movie sucks. Wow. Oh, my God. So, yeah. Our House on Netflix. Avoid it like the plague. Oh, my God. Couldn't do it. Oh, God. Ooh, can I just say one thing? Because when you were talking about... um, like wireless electricity, it reminded me of, um, so, you know how I love like, like the genealogy thing and whatever, but not enough to actually join Ancestry.com because I, I don't want to like give the Mormons all my money. Oh, I don't know yeah. why, I don't know where I heard that the Mormons started Ancestry.com, but you know how Mormons like to baptize people after they're dead Mm -hmm. so that they can claim that all these people, all these millions of people are Mormons, even though those people... And what is it supposed to... Does it have a benefit for their soul? 
I think they think it does. I don't know. But, like, so if they can just get the names of all these people, if all these people in the world enter all their family history in there, then they have access. I mean, it could be an urban legend for a long time. And does they'll go from, like, hell or purgatory to heaven? I don't know. I really, really don't okay. know. Okay, anyway. And, yeah, anyway, and, and, okay. And like I said, it might, even, it might even not be true at all. I just heard that somewhere. <laughs> okay. And, but, and, but, any, but anyway. But I have a reason. So... Just so much in my in my family, on both sides of my family, there's like like the family lore of, well, you know we're related to so-and-so, like that kind of thing. And I've talked about that kind of shit before. But the wireless electricity thing takes me back to um, Nathan Stubblefield, who my father's mother was a Stubblefield. And according to my dad... And I don't know what the relation is, but uh, Nathan Stubblefield was an old, like, farmer and inventor, like the town kook in this little town in Kentucky. Not the town my dad grew up in, but some some place in Kentucky. And apparently, back in, like, I'm going to say, God, I don't even, I don't even know. I could, you know what? I should look it up. I should, I should quickly check. Okay, so this would have been, this would have been like around the turn of the century. Oh, like 1902. I just, I just pulled it up to make sure. Nathan Beverly Stubblefield, uh, born in 1860. So, self-described practical farmer, fruit grower, and electrician. So, he, he basically invented what would eventually become cell phones like wireless like fuck alexander graham bell like wireless phone connection and it's and and some people would even go so far as to say he invented radio because it as long as it's transmission of sound through Mm -hmm. the air you know his induction wireless telephone is what is what it is but the thing that is really fabulous about him, in addition to just, you know, his scientific... I mean, literally crazy old farmer in a barn inventing shit mm-hmm. and somehow ends up stumbling upon this because, you know, electricity was really cool around the turn of the, the last century. And, oh, yeah. You know? And I, it's it's amazing that, you know, he didn't electrocute himself. Although, now that I think of it, we really don't know how he died because here's here's the the most memorable thing about Mr. Nathan Beverly Stubblefield is that when he died his body was found in his barn having been gnawed on by rats. Oh no. Poor guy. Oh no. <laughs> And sadly, uh, he, um, when they buried him, it was an unmarked grave because he was just a poor oh. inventor. But I guess eventually, once people realized he was kind of a badass, I guess someone bought him a headstone. But oh, well, that's someday, good. someday I'll find out if, if I really truly am related to this dude. Because that's kind of awesome. And you need to change your name to Stubblefield. <laughs> You know, one of one of my aunts on that side of the family, her middle name is Stubblefield. Wow. That's a weird. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? We need to come. We need. There needs to be like some weird British drama series or something with that stars. You know, Edna Stubblefield McLaughlin. <laughs> <laughs> I'm willing to bet. Not, I'm not willing to look it up right now, but I bet somewhere in the world, in the history of the world, there has been an Edna Stubblefield McLaughlin. Because God damn it, that's a good name, isn't it? <laughs> and I bet Edna, I bet is like the slightly older sister of Marjorie from Fat Fighters. <laughs> Thanks for listening. If you enjoy our show, please...
please take a moment to rate us and review us on Apple Podcasts or Stitcher. If you send us a screenshot of your review, we'll send you a Bitchin' Boutique sticker. Everyone Everyone loves loves stickers! Please subscribe or add us to your favorites wherever you get your podcasts. Subscribers get new episodes first and are also more attractive. Drop us a line anytime at pitneyandamelia at gmail.com. We'd love to hear from you! excited about the month of of at least it's not feces <laughs> it's not what it's not feces oh feces feces that would be indecent 30 seconds left jane 30 seconds left 30 seconds left jane <laughs>